All right, so in this video, we're going to be doing custom engine mounts for the Mini Cooper. Obviously, sw switching in the 4G63 engine. Uh, we did have to cut the frame rail last time and shift it over. So now we finally get to actually put in the engine mounts and get everything set up to basically fix where that engine is going to sit, which allows us to get our axles in place, our suspension components in place, and pretty much everything else just to get it set just the way we want it. So we can get full suspension travel and everything else, make sure the hood closes, and make sure everything else works. But that all starts with building the engine mounts, and that starts right here. Enjoy. And I'll end up chopping this right here, and then, then uh, it'll be able to clear the headlight, which is the reason why it doesn't fit right now. Because obviously to keep it stealth and to keep it a sleeper, I have to have headlights. It's not like I'm mounting a turbo there or something. Since this will be cut off here, I'm going to relocate the hole from here to the new center, which is going to be just above the frame rail, so there won't be any sort of twisting load on this. It's going to be a little bit different because of the space constraints. So we are going to mount this to the frame rail. The problem is the frame rail was never designed to actually have bolts going through it horizontally. And then for this, I cut it a little bit too shy, but that's actually going to work out for us anyway. The hole used to be right here. So we got rid of that. We are going to weld on the end piece of the bracket and then re-drill a hole here in the center. And that's again because we've relocated the entire engine and transmission over. So right now, this is pretty much perfect on this side in terms of symmetric with this side. And that means that our engine and transmission centered relative to the frame, which means we're basically going to have our wheel spacing out an extra half inch which is totally fine with me on this side, an extra half inch on the other side. Uh, and then there may be some swappability between talons and everything else, but if I match the OEM suspension and drivetrain, I will be able to bolt on any aftermarket part from the GSX that completely replaces the OEM, which means it'll make it easier for upgrades and other parts, replacements, things like that. So that's what I'm working with here. So you see we've got our frame rail already welded. We've got it ground down to be flush to meet up with our frame rail uh, or with our crash bar. So, and then we've got about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Yeah, it's probably right at five eighths actually, right in there. And the engine shouldn't move too much horizontally because we do have two mounts set up left and right. And it shouldn't move too much forward and aft because again, we have two mounts on that as well one here and then one in the rear so we're going to tie all that stuff in on this chassis and then we do have quite a bit of space in the back too uh, only thing we're gonna to have to move is the brake booster reference line and then the um, clutch line here runs a little bit close so we'll bend it to go down and around but we should be able to use the abs module controller and abs unit for the mini cooper so that's going to be awesome not have to worry about that still have abs and then we're, our electric power steering back here clears just nicely. And then in here, again, I don't, might be a little bit difficult to see, but we're gonna be able to have our AC compressor in here as well. And then our axle should run right behind that, just like it does in the Mitsubishi. All right, so I kind of know I said not to do this in another video, but I don't really have much of a choice right now. So we're using 3M window well, which is between a 55 and a 60. Uh, a on the durometer scale uh, We actually have to chop these mounts and this one here. We're actually we have to chop it right here Which is basically going to decrease this bearing strength in here So this is basically just going to crush so we have to fill this so I got some tape on the back side So it won't leak out while it's curing um, And then I'm gonna actually re-drill this hole here and put the bushing through it And so the whole thing is basically going to change shape so I need to fill this to get some of that strength back now there may and most likely will be some air pockets in here because of this. So this is not the best way to do it. Ideally, I would have liked to do the motor mounts I did in the other video where I used a much more liquid consistency on the urethane. Now this stuff only has a 15 to 20 minute work time. So if your mounts are bigger, plan accordingly. All right, so right now we're just chopping this mountain half. We're finally getting that steel out of the way. And then that way we can go ahead and measure and mark up what we need to clear our headlight. We can test fit our headlight right here. First thing I'm doing now is just playing with the mill a little bit. I got some new milling bits. And then we can actually mark and begin to cut our silicone mounts. 
Now I'm drilling out the holes for the bushing insert to go through and also marking it on the other piece so I know how where that is gonna transfer through. So that way I have a straight hole between the two of them. Obviously welding up the bracket. And now press fitting in the bushing. All right, so here's how I have the rear engine mount set up. I basically just welded it into the frame, into the subframe, just in front of the steering rack, uh, which is actually, as you can see here, uh, there is no fluid on it. It's actually an electric power steering, so I'll be keeping that, and it fits perfectly, actually. And since I welded, I'm trying to dodge the engine here, since I welded that in the frame, I welded it with screws, so I can just take these two 14 millimeter tight I'm just snugging these up for now on the driver's side we basically welded here we welded inside here we gave it just a tack weld back there and then we weld it on this inside seam here. So that way we didn't have any protrusions, but of course we can also weld here as well and lock this plate into this piece and to the frame. So now the way that this is gonna mount up, we've got our chopped mount here. Chopped, chopped mount with our bolt going through it, relocated hole. And we're gonna have these channels that I cut out of some box steel put a hole through here and that hole is going to go all the way through to the other side so it's going to bolt basically like that and there's going to be another channel on the other side then I'm going to weld up another tab here which will allow this piece to resist rotation within this mount and I'll do the same on the other side uh, but then in addition to that I'm also going to go from here to this bolt mount right there and brace that so that way I have a little bit of triangulation going on so that it resists rotation in addition to having the bolt there uh, it'll have this piece here this will be stronger but that little bolt will at least hold a little bit and keep it from flopping around when I'm trying to install the engine All right, so I took a piece of L bracket and actually chopped a V in it and removed that center and I was able to go ahead and bend it back so I got the perfect angle. And then we went ahead and welded that together and put in some, some pieces there and then sanded everything uh, relatively flush. I can always go back and fill those in, but that's how it ties into the frame. And just using an OE bolt. We're working on a transmission mount side and we are tightening up some nuts here uh, with some bolts going through it to lock the plate that's going to be welded to our frame and to the OEM mount so we have perfect bolt lineup and then we're going to go ahead and weld in those nuts to that plate and we're going to full weld it just to make sure those don't break because if those break it's stuck in the frame. So drilling out the frame is actually pretty tough there's quite a bit of a few layers of steel there and they're relatively <coughs> steel steel there and they're relatively thick and we have to grind off all the paint and just to make sure that our plate fits perfectly in those holes, we had to ground away a little bit of the extra nuts that were there. And then we gotta weld it. Now of course we're moving the mount so we get access so we can do full welds on the inside and outside where we have those relief cuts. This did take a significant amount of time to weld. We did have to cut a lot of uh, eighth inch plate to make some additional bracing to the frame rail to take care of some of those gaps. But all in all, it made a very nice box section and we were able to tie into it quite well. And it's basically 360 degrees welded around the outside of this face. 
and those reinforcing plates tied in very well to just all around to the frame. Now, of course, we had to grind down some of our proud welds, make sure there wasn't any warpage. And now we have to remove the threads from the OEM mount. The OEM mount is threaded, uh, which means we won't be able to tighten it down and lock it into the frame rail. So we're getting rid of those threads and opening up the bore a bit, uh, as well as removing and shortening some of the spacing so we can use the OEM bolts and actually bolt straight into the Mini Cooper frame. So we don't have to add any extra uh, bolts or worry about anything that's not an OE spec bolt. Alignment was a little bit too perfect and uh, made it a little bit difficult to get everything lined up. It's not impossible, just took a lot of wiggling and jiggling to get all the bolts to fit perfectly. Here's what the finished result is. Again, the welds aren't the most pretty, uh, but of course we can always grind those down later. But it holds, it's really strong. The engine is not moving at all now that we have three of the mounts in place and we just need to finish welding the fourth mount, tying that into the front crash bar. Also, if you haven't already, if you want to see more of the build or you want to go back and catch up on some of the other build, uh, definitely check out the channel, check out the website, initialdiymods.com. Make sure to subscribe to get notifications. If you have any questions on the build, what I'm doing, you want me to explain something or want me to show something in more detail later on, just leave a comment in the section below and I'll make sure to go ahead and address that and add in anything I need in the next video or just answer your comment right there. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, give it a share, that really does help out a lot. Uh, just enjoy the fucking video.